Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Eileen, and this is another Daily Dose of Medicine Walk. And for those of you who are listening in on Blog Talk Radio, this is Healing House Radio. So um, I was kind of thinking about um, some different things, you know, what is what it is that I could talk about today. And it's interesting because an issue came up where it was... You know, it, when you're talking to people, sometimes you get that situation where you are both convinced you are so right. And it is interesting because it's at those moments that, you know, the patterns kick in. And when we start going into, it's like, okay, this person is, is t- talking to me about this one thing, but my feeling is is that they're actually going in this other direction. They're actually, you know, focusing on this. And this is the real reason why they're, you know, as upset as they are. And even with someone who has been dealing with empathy and actively working with it for as long as I have, it is still sometimes surprisingly easy to fall into the trap of thinking that my empathy is giving me more than what it is. And I found myself, I actually kind of stopped in the middle of the conversation when I realized, wait a minute, I'm adding a story to what I'm feeling that aligns with my side of the argument. And this is a very powerful moment to realize. And um, (laughs) it, it actually ended up rerouting the entire conversation because then it's like, oh, okay, I'm not getting the story. I'm not getting the right story. So what I did was I stopped and I created questions. It's like, okay, obviously we're not on the same page. We're not communicating. And I have the feeling we may not be arguing about the same thing. So why don't you tell me what it is that is bothering you? What it is, you know, that you're really feeling about this and have them tell me that. And that experience really is a very important one because of the fact that it is a reminder that empathy is not the only tool that we have available to us. Yes, we're empaths. And yes, a lot of things are going to kind of come through that doorway. But we've got to remember that first and foremost, empathy does not give us a whole story. Empathy gives us a piece of the story based on what that person is experiencing energetically or emotionally in that moment. And we need way more information than that. Um, It's sort of like why tarot readers generally are discouraged from reading their own cards. Because there is, no matter how neutral we think we're being, There's always that little sliver of bias that we can experience. So much in the same way, I would not recommend that an empath during like either an argument or a moment of stress or something like that, attempt to use empathy to explain what somebody else is doing or explain somebody else's motivations, because in that moment, we are not totally neutral. And yes, there are ways that we can practice being more neutral in general. And there are always those exceptional situations where, you know, even though we want to believe we are, we're not. And it can be a problem when we trust too much in our empathy without having, well, without getting a second opinion. Now, as a chiropractor, as a doctor, I often will tell people, it's like, well, you know, there's this going on. This is what I believe, but I think it may be more. So I want you to go talk to someone else. I want you to go get some tests. I want you to go talk to a a neurologist, or I want you to talk to an orthopedist. The idea of a second opinion, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means that you want to make sure you have all the available information. And as an empath, when you're dealing with people and, you know, maybe if you're kind of mediating between two and 
We did a whole video on empaths as mediators that it can be really, really good as long as we are very solid in who we are. Because if an unmanaged empath is trying to mediate, what happens is they end up siding with the one who has the stronger energy. So it's not always impartial. We can, we can be excellent mediators as long as we can nail that impartial piece where we go into neutrality and we can be able to gently guide based on the energies that we're feeling on both sides. But we cannot commit to either side. You know, we can't take sides. And that's very difficult because if one side is tremendously passionate and intense and the other side is a little bit more passive, we will lean towards that more powerful energy. So how do we get a second opinion? Well, the most direct way is to kind of, you know, set the empathy on a back burner and look for more information from other sources. Let's say if it's a conflict you're in with somebody else, well, the first thing you can do is ask them calmly if they can re-explain their situation and listen, really listen, you know, look in their eyes, see, see what's going on with them and, and really hear their words because that's a wonderful way that we can fill in the gaps of the stuff that we don't know or that that maybe we didn't hear the first time around because it's very easy to get so caught up in your empathy that you're not, you stop listening. You stop using the other senses and it is good to be able to equalize that out. Empathy isn't the only solution, but it adds to the pieces and the clues that we need to solve the problem. You can also go to a trusted friend and say, well, um, you know, this issue came up with this person. This was my position. What do you think? And if it's a real, you know, good trusted friend who is willing to tell you the truth, who is willing to say, well, you know, maybe I don't read it the same way you did. And our empathy can tell us, even if it irritates us, that we know that we can trust that person. So look for other answers. If the answer you're getting, especially if it's related to something close to you, close to your heart, close to, you know, your feeling of safety or well-being, it's important to be able to talk to somebody else. Now, if you know other empaths, even better, as long as they're still willing to be honest with you. We can trust our empathy we just don't depend on it as our only source of information. You know, it, it's like, you know, trying to, to figure out if a play is good, but you had your ears plugged the whole time. You didn't hear it. You didn't have the full experience. And empathy does not mean that we can read minds. I mean, there are people who can. And empathy is not about that. We get a snapshot of what someone is energetically experiencing in that moment. And maybe it's, you know, absolute anger at someone, but it's only because of a particular circumstance. They're not normally angry at that person or they're not normally angry people. So trust your empathy, use it as a part of the solution, as one of the clues that come in but always remember there's a lot going on that is outside of empathy. So we need to use all of our abilities, all of our, our you know, observational skills, all of our sleuthing skills, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of Sherlock Holmes in there. Always look for more information. Always look for the bigger story because there's always a bigger story. And empathy can definitely help us find that. Empathy can be very helpful if someone is having trouble putting into words what it is that they are feeling. And it's not that we give them the words. You know, we can, we can use phrases like, you know, wow, this just, this just really seems to hit you deep. 
you know, it seems like there's something deep inside that, you know, j that just you want to get out or to talk about. You know, it really seems very hurtful to you. Or this really seems like, you know, you're really, really angry about this. And usually it'll be, well, yeah, I'm angry or yeah, yeah, I'm scared. Empathy can be used to gently invite people to get more real within themselves and say the things that they need to say, because once everything is out, then conflict can be resolved. But if we're kind of leaning what we pick up and try to create a story around it that supports our side or our point of view, or maybe this is someone we're talking to that, you know, maybe we don't have the best relationship with, so there's going to be a bias. You know, there's going to be that, well, there's probably something under there that indicates their dishonesty or, or whatever. We can't put that on someone else. If someone seems to be hiding something, they might be hiding because they don't feel safe in that moment. It's not necessarily because they're being deceptive. So you see how, you know, if, if we sense hiding, if we sense deception, it's not that there's a deceptive person. They just may not feel safe in exposing it. Or maybe, you know, it, it relates to something that they hold in confidence, that they're bound by a promise to hold something in confidence that they can't reveal. So there's a lot of reasons why someone would be emanating a particular energy. And if we're thick in the, in the issue, then it makes it really hard for us to separate that. So in these cases, it's best to call in somebody else who can be able to kind of be more of a mediating neutral energy in that. And like I said, empaths really need those friends who will tell us the truth, who will let us know when it's like, you know what? I mean, honestly, I think you're kind of reading this a little bit off. You know, this isn't how I'm reading it. And when we can have that support system, then we can be able to be more authentic with ourselves. And we can catch those moments when our own biases are kicking in and not altering what we pick up, but adding an overlay to it. So consider that the next time that you're in an argument and you're utilizing your empathy, is the empathy really giving you the story that you need? Or is it just the beginning of finding out more information? Always consider it a piece to the puzzle, but it's not the whole puzzle. So it helps us to not make so many assumptions and it helps us to be able to fine tune what it is we want to do and how we want to use empathy in conflicts. It should just be used to be able to understand that person enough to help them to be able to express themselves. But we've got to be honest too. We've got to be coming from our honest place and we cannot use empathy to hide behind. We can't use that as a dodge. We can't, you know, these are not the droids you're looking for. That's not cool. It is possible, but it's not cool, especially when you're dealing with a conflict resolution, you know, fight fair. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this topic or any other topic, please ask them in the comments. If you're listening in on blog talk radio, you can leave them in the comments there. And I also invite you to visit the link that's in the description that goes to the YouTube page. If this works for you. If you like what you see, then please like the video. And if you would consider subscribing, that would be so awesome. You know, the channel is, you know, slowly growing and, and the analytics are, are really starting to look very good. And I just really want this to be something that's helpful for people. And that is a positive thing. And if nothing else, that it is a place on YouTube where you can go where there is absolutely no drama. So if you would like to reach me, you can do so through my Facebook group, Medicine Walk with Dr. Eileen. You can follow me on Twitter and you can also leave comments here and you can reach me by the email address that is listed in the description. And if you have any questions about empathy or any topics you would like me to cover, then please let me know. 
So again, thank you for joining me. And as always, I wish you balance and I wish you blessings from my heart to yours. Love you and see you next time. Bye.